I quit BetterHelp, but I used them for a year and a half before I quit, so I want to share my mixed experience with you, the pros and cons of five different things. But before we get started, I just want to say that I am not sponsored by BetterHelp, even though that's really hard to believe because as you're scrolling through social media, it seems like every celebrity and their mamas are sponsored for some reason but I paid for this service entirely on my own and am speaking from my own experience. I'm also like not a celebrity, so. <laughs> and the cost for BetterHelp ranges anywhere from 60 to $90 per week and they bill you every four weeks. Pricing was very important to me when I first started BetterHelp in 2020 because I was in my last year of grad school at the time and I was broke. So BetterHelp was the most affordable option for me, and that's why I started using it. And I strongly recommend that you apply for their financial aid because they do apply a pretty good discount. And for me, when I applied, I was paying about $108 when I was a student versus $135 when I wasn't a student anymore. But this was a pro because it was much more affordable than in-person therapy for me, even using insurance. And I guess the con would be that BetterHelp does not accept health insurance, at least at the time of this recording. So when you first sign up, you go through a series of questions about demographics and other questions like, are you religious? Are you spiritual? What are you trying to get out of therapy? Things like that. And after you answer these questions and you're signed up, you're matched with a counselor that kind of goes along with the answers that you answered. The pro is that it's really easy to be matched with a counselor, but the con is that the counselor can be a hit or miss. After going through some research and reviews on my own, I read that a lot of people actually get pretty crappy therapists that don't either listen to them or they're not as responsive as they should be. And with my own experience, my first therapist was like that but also had a lot of problems like sympathizing with me and listening to me. So if you ever run into a situation like this, you do not have to explain yourself. You can just hit switch counselor or whatever it is, change counselor and choose from their list of available therapists. When I was first starting therapy, a lot of people were telling me that you need at least a month before you really know if the relationship is good before moving on. But I'd say the minute that you feel like something's off, that you're not being listened to or heard, you dip out. Like you leave right away. Okay, maybe not like that minute. I'm just saying that you don't need a whole month to see if someone's the right fit for you. You have to trust yourself and know that if you feel like something is off, trust your gut. BetterHelp advertises that there's live chat, there's phone sessions, video sessions, and you can also message your therapist in between sessions, which is great because they're allowing for easier access to your therapist depending on what your needs are. The con is that not all therapists offer all modes of communication. And my first therapist actually only offered chat sessions and phone sessions. And when I actually emailed BetterHelp to complain, they said, hey, we're so sorry, but it's at the discretion of the therapist to have these modes of communication. And due to personal reasons, I ended up switching over to another counselor anyway, who did offer all modes of communication. The sessions were about 30 minutes. And if I felt like there was a lot more to talk about, I always asked my therapist if I could extend my time for an hour. And to book sessions, you just need to pull up the calendar and pick the days and times that work best for you. And if there aren't any days that work for you, then you can coordinate that with your therapist. I personally prefer the video sessions because I feel like talking face to face is always super helpful for me. But honestly, there are so many days where I just don't want to talk to someone. So I was able to still book a live chat session instead of skipping out entirely on therapy, which I really appreciated. One of the cons, in my opinion, would be that if you have an in-demand therapist, which was the case with the second therapist that I saw, sessions were constantly just booked out two to three weeks at a time. 
and he was honestly the best therapist I've ever seen like in person and through online therapy so I was willing to wait that time for him. This next con would be a personal experience of mine that my therapist when he did show up would sometimes show up like 10 or 15 minutes late without any warning without messaging me to let me know that he was going to be late so that just frustrated me a little bit so there's a tab for journaling and the journal entries are all blank they actually have prompted entries now which you can also shuffle through if you want to use those instead and you could choose to share those journal entries with your therapist or just leave them be and keep them private. And for the group in ours, I really did like the topics that they had them on. I just hated that they were always scheduled during the workday that I wasn't able to go to. And it's a shame because I feel like I would have gotten a lot more out of the BetterHelp experience if those group in ours were scheduled at more convenient times. So you guys are probably thinking like, oh, you were seeing the best therapist you've ever seen. Why would you leave the app? Well, this is a story for you. Okay, so my therapist ended up leaving the platform without saying goodbye. <laughs> it was so bad. Like I was with him almost an entire year and a half and he just dipped out. And it was because of health reasons, which I completely understand, but that's like a breakup, y'all. Like, <laughs> like, I was spilling my heart and soul out to this guy and he just left. <laughs> um, but then I was just like, okay, you know what? I'll just give another therapist a chance. So I matched with another therapist and she no-showed on me a couple times. And at that point, I was just like, you know what? Fuck this, I'm done, I'm done. This is adding on more distress for me. So I think I'm just gonna let it go and maybe try another app, which I probably will and review that one too in the future. Now I'd also like to say that I found out about the privacy concerns regarding BetterHelp after I quit the platform. And really quick, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's controversy going around that BetterHelp is mining your data and sharing it with other apps like Facebook and Snapchat for marketing purposes. This is all included in their privacy policy and you could read about it using the link that I'm gonna put on screen right here. In my opinion, even though the controversy is like super messed up, I think that if you're aware of this going on and you kinda just don't care, and you need the help, I think that BetterHelp is a good option for you. And I'm saying this because I found the best therapist I've ever had on the app. And I think that having apps like BetterHelp, this is opening up a whole new world and providing more access to people who wouldn't otherwise get help and go to therapy. If I missed anything in this video, or if you had a different experience from me, go ahead and comment down below because I think that it would be really helpful for other people to hear about your experience. And I'd be curious too, like what did you go through? Did you go through the same things I did? If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more videos on mental health and self-development in the future. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.